person should never drive a car while they are under the influence of alcohol. A person should never drive a car while they are under the influence of alcohol and going 80 plus miles an hour. A person should never drive a car while they're under the influence of alcohol going 80 plus miles an hour with an unrestrained front passenger. The defendant, Bradley Carraway, did all three. On August 6th of 2015, 25-year-old Shanae Mormon should have returned home from a night out with her friends. She should have woken up in her bed at her mom's house. She should have thought about the great time that she had at the concert that she attended the night before. She should have had a normal weekend. Instead, Shanae Mormon was ejected from Bradley Carraway's 2014 Honda Accord as he lost control of his car, ran off the road, flipped the car on its roof. Shanae thrown out of that vehicle. She was trapped underneath 3,000 pounds of mangled Honda. The car laid on her chest. It restricted her breathing. She slowly lost oxygen and blood to her brain, and she passed. The defendant, Bradley Carraway, walked away nearly unscathed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. So this case starts on August 5th of 2016. Shanae and some of her friends, they had gone out to 4th Street Live. She put on a cute outfit. She got ready for a night out. They had a concert to go to. Eli Young Band was playing at 4th Street. The weather was nice. It was a summer night. Eventually, Shanae and her friends left the party at 4th Street, and they moved to the bars in the St. Matthews area. They had taken Ubers everywhere they had gone, and they ended up initially at Tin Roof, and then Shanae made her way over to Gerstle's. While inside of Gerstle's, Shanae encountered the defendant, Bradley Carraway, 34-year-old Bradley Carraway. As far as we all know, the two of them were strangers before that night. They struck up a conversation at the bar, and the video is very grainy, but the two of them are right here in the corner. Shanae with the dark hair and Bradley Carraway with a beer in his hand. And around 1.47 in the morning, now we're in the early morning hours of August 6th, the defendant ordered up another beer. He will sign a receipt here shortly. And Shanae, you will see from additional camera angles during the trial, Shanae is standing off to the side where he is looking. Four minutes after ordering that second beer, Shanae and the defendant walked out of Gerstle's together. Just the two of them. Shanae walking in the front and the defendant walking right behind her. And unlike Shanae on that night, the defendant had his car with him, the 2014 Honda Accord. This is the last time that we will all see Shanae alive. That was at 1.51 a.m. Kenneth McPeters, a young man who worked at Main Event um, in the J-Town, Middletown area, left work around 2.45 in the morning. He takes 64 East toward Lexington on his way home. 
he got on to 64 and he was getting off on the ramp going to Gene Snyder, the Gene Snyder exit south when he noticed a vehicle overturned in a ditch. So Kenneth McPeters is taking this ramp here. He notices a vehicle in the ditch and Kenneth McPeters being the good Samaritan that he is, he stops, he backs up on the ramp and he goes to make sure that everybody is okay. Kenneth walks up on the car. The car is flipped on its roof facing the wrong direction on the ramp and Kenneth initially does not see anybody. He doesn't see anybody in the car. We are now looking at the passenger side of the car. The driver's side is facing outside of the ramp. The windows are up. He doesn't see a person. He doesn't hear a person. He doesn't see anybody walking around. He doesn't hear anybody walking around. In fact, it's actually pretty eerie because the radio of that car is still playing while Kenneth walks up on it. So Kenneth, he calls 911. 2.51 in the morning, he places a 911 call and says, hey, there's an overturned car. I don't see anybody out here, but I think we need some assistance. LMPD is very quick to respond. Four minutes after the call comes in, the first LMPD officer arrives on scene, Officer Woods. Unfortunately, you won't hear from Officer Woods this week. He's having emergency surgery, um, but, off, but you will hear about him. So Officer Woods arrives on this scene, and in the four minutes that it took Officer Woods to get there, other people had stopped on the ramp to assist Kenneth McPeters because they saw him standing out there. <coughs> Excuse me. And everybody that had witnessed this was very concerned. Officer Woods dispatches for EMS, fire, and again, within minutes, all of those agencies would arrive. But Officer Woods walks around that Honda, and he is looking for any occupants of the car. Obviously, there is an overturned car. Somebody must have been in it. So Officer Woods walks around, and he eventually notices legs sticking out with the assistance of Kenneth McPeters and a couple of the other men that were on scene, they push the car up just a little bit so he can pull out the legs that are sticking out from underneath this Honda. Officer Woods pulled out the lifeless body of 25-year-old Shanae Young from underneath Bradley Carraway's 2014 Honda. EMS arrived just a couple of minutes later. The fire department arrived, but it was too late. Shanae was pronounced deceased at 3.10 <clears throat> in the morning. She was cold to the touch. Her skin was cold. She was pulseless. There was nothing any of them could do at that time. The Louisville Metro Police Department has a traffic unit, and veteran officer Clarence Buford um, will be assigned as the lead investigator to this case. The traffic unit responds to vehicle collisions such as this one, and sometimes they respond. It's a single car, single occupant, and it's a pretty easy case to solve, right? 
one person, one driver. Here, they responded, they had a single car, they had a single occupant, and so this initially should have been an easy case. It shouldn't have been a case at all. However, things very quickly started not to make sense. The car was obviously flipped and on its roof. We had the single deceased victim, Shanae. However, the car had no connection to Shanae Norman. The owner of the car is Bradley Carraway. And the owner of the car, Bradley Carraway, was nowhere to be found. Kenneth McPeters didn't see him. LMPD didn't see him. The fire department didn't see him. And the fire department actually used a thermal imaging device because they were looking for additional victims. It was dark, so they walked around this thermal imaging device to make sure that there were no more bodies in that area. They found nobody. Bradley Carraway was long gone. He was long gone and would not be located until hours later. 6.46 a.m. Shanae is found at 2.51. 6.46 a.m. Officer Manuel Cruz, who had the unfortunate task of notifying Shanae's mom that she had passed, was coming back from that death notification and he saw a shirtless, barefoot Bradley Carraway walking on the side of Gene Snyder. No shoes, no shirt. His socks were shredded. Socks were sh shredded, scratches all over his body but no significant injuries. Officer Cruz, another veteran officer that's been with the force for several decades, noticed that the defendant's eyes were bloodshot and that he smelled of alcohol. And one thing that will not be at dispute in this case is the fact that Bradley Carraway was intoxicated. You heard that yesterday from his counsel. There is no question about that. That is the one thing that we all in this courtroom can agree on. Bradley Carraway was drunk. Knowing that his vehicle was involved in this very serious rollover crash, officers contacted EMS, got him checked out, and got him sent down to the University of Louisville Hospital. Ultimately, his health was fine. He had some bruising, some scratches, but no major injuries. He was prescribed extra strength Tylenol for his troubles. So why are we here? We are here to determine who the driver of Bradley Carraway's car was. The evidence will point you in one direction. Bradley Carraway. So as everything is happening at the hospital, Officer Buford is starting his investigation. He's working the case, and like I said, things are not adding up for him. We have Shanae, who was ejected, and that is a key piece of evidence in this case. Shanae was ejected from the Honda. We have Bradley Carraway unscathed. We have Bradley Carraway leaving Shanae trapped under his car. Not a call for help, nothing. Just left her there to die. And him walking down to Gene Snyder several hours later. The evidence in this case, you'll have to look at the totality of it. There will be science, there will be experts, and no single piece of evidence will give you the answer that you need. But the sum of all of the evidence and the investigation 
will give you the answer to this case. The driver of the car is Bradley Carraway, the drunk driver that took Shanae's life. So one of the most important pieces of evidence will be the car itself. The car has an event data recorder, or what we commonly know as a black box. The car records any significant crash events. It records the event itself in a couple of seconds prior. The Honda had this equipment. It's called an EDR. And that EDR tells you how fast the car was going. It tells you which seat belts were worn at the time of the crash, amongst other information. But the crash data recovered from the defendant's Honda during Officer Buford's investigation will tell you that his car experienced two crash events very, in, a, in a very short time span, about a second apart. The first crash event is a side event where likely when he lost control of the car and hit the side of it when he started the rollover. And then the second event is the rollover event. And we saw that the car landed on its roof. You will hear about data that shows you that that car rolled and flipped. And you will also see pictures that make it very clear how far that car traveled from the road into the grassy area next to that ramp off of Gene Snyder. The car will also tell you that it was traveling at 83 miles an hour seconds before these crash events are recorded intoxicated 83 miles an hour and most importantly the car will tell you that the driver of that car had their seat belt on and the front passenger did not seat belts are designed to save lives seat belts are designed to keep people inside of the car during a crash. Seat belts are designed to keep people from being ejected out of a car during a crash. The seat belt in a car will tighten as the car is experiencing a crash to hold the human in place and secure them from, from being thrown out in the event of a rollover or any other collision. The seatbelt evidence was very telling as to what happened in this case. Officers and experts in the field of these event data recorders reviewed the data multiple times. And each time the car told them the same thing. Arguably this car is the best witness in this case. Listen to it. It produced the same results. Crash data one, driver, seatbelt on, passenger off. Crash data two, driver, seatbelt on, passenger off. It checked it three times. These were the results each of those times. You will also see physical evidence of the seatbelt being worn. Just looking at the car. The seat belt, the driver's seat belt, is still pulled out in the position because it had been buckled during the crash. The passenger seat belt is retracted all the way up where it would be if it was never used. This seat belt has visible tension marks from where it stretched and pulled while keeping the driver of this car safely inside of it. The car told Officer Buford that the driver was wearing a seat belt, that the seat belt worked as it was supposed to, that it saved the driver from being ejected. So the only person 
who could have reasonably been driving was Bradley Carraway. Officer Buford did not stop his investigation there. He did other things, some just to make sure that he is being a thorough investigator. He had the car mechanically expected, inspected. That car worked exactly the way that it was supposed to. The car didn't have any mechanical defects that would have, that would have sent it off the road or anything like that. This crash is human failure. It's not the car, it is the driver. Officer Buford also had the vehicle swabbed for DNA in hopes of being able to get information as to who was where. And you will see the inside of the car, there are several blood smears. There's the blood smear on the driver's side windshield. There are blood smears on the passenger side airbags. And all of the blood inside of the car belonged to Bradley Carraway. Shanae Mormon was not found anywhere in the car because she was ejected. The steering wheel of the car had Bradley Carraway's DNA on it. Officer Buford also requested that Bradley Carraway undergo a clinical forensic examination while at the University of Louisville Hospital and blood sample collection. The living forensic is a 360 head to toe exam that is conducted by a doctor who specializes in forensic medicine. That is going to be Dr. Bill Smock. Dr. Smock's examination revealed that the defendant was the restrained driver. The physical attributes, he had a mark on his shoulder that was consistent with the seatbelt being worn. And you know, you will hear throughout this case even from some defense experts, that the defendant was wearing a seatbelt. We know from the car only one person was wearing a seatbelt, the driver. In addition to Dr. Smock's physical examination, Dr. Smock also determined that Bradley Carraway, <clears throat> excuse me, that Bradley Carraway was impaired at least twice the legal limit at the time of the collision. Again, that is evidence that will be presented to you, but it's not in dispute. He was drinking, he was drunk. So why are we here? Because the defendant drove his car while under the influence of alcohol. The defendant drove his car 83 miles an hour while under the influence of alcohol. 83 miles an hour plus alcohol and an unrestrained Shanae Mormon. Not only did he do that, but then when he crashed that car, he left. He left without rendering any aid. He left without calling 911. He left without flagging anybody down. He left. He tried to get away. But we're here. We're here because he showed an extreme, extreme indifference to the value of Shanae's life. We're here because 25-year-old Shanae, you'll hear she was a former cheerleader at U of L, a proud cardinal. She struggled with cystic fibrosis. She had a great relationship with her mom. She was a sister. She was a young woman with a bright future ahead of her. They met the wrong guy in a bar and ended up trapped underneath his car. At the end of the conclusion of the Commonwealth's evidence, it will be clear to you that the defendant, Bradley Carraway, was driving his 
Honda Accord that he left Shanae and that he is guilty of murder and we will ask you on behalf of the Commonwealth of Kentucky to find him guilty of murder based on the evidence presented to you.